What's going on, everybody? Doc and Spock back again, finally bringing you a Sergeant Forge deck build uh, to kind of round out our deck builds. Uh, again, we are going to kind of take a relook at, at, at the other six leaders just to see if there's anything crazy from when we played the Blitz beta. Uh, we're still getting our hands around this, uh, just kind of figuring out, uh, one, kind of what the meta is sitting right now, and then two, also kind of what uh, other unit changes uh, and things that got swapped up. Uh, me and him are pretty close to having all the cards unlocked. Uh, but we don't want to really bring you uh, a leader build unless we have everything unlocked. Sergeant Forge, me and him, uh, especially with the Forge packs, we're lucky enough to get all these cards. Uh, so Sloth's going to kick us off and talk us through what his deck uh, currently is sitting like. Yeah, we'll take a look at this. And, and we'll see, we worked a, pretty hard to get a, a decent energy curve on this because Forge is really easy to be really high energy. Um, that can happen very quickly. So um, the first thing we're going to start off is the Wolverine. Um, again, air is always a huge focus in all of these. Got to have something that can really take out air. Uh, this is a good opportunity. You could also substitute in the Vanguard Wolverine if you so choose. It's nice to have that detect and rush on that. Um, but either way, if you want to keep the energy cost down, uh, cutting it down another 30, uh, down to 40 for the, to the Vanguard or from the Vanguard to the standard Wolverine, a uh, decent option here. That's kind of what we're playing with, around with right now. Nightingale, kind of self-explanatory. Have one of those or uh, the engineers in all of your decks. Uh, that seems to be pretty standard. Reactive Cyclops. Um, we've we've kind of gone back and forth on this one a little bit. I like the Reflect. I like the ability to handle vehicle units early game. And at 50 energy, that's not too bad. Yeah, so here uh, we, we've talked through... Uh, obviously, if you don't have the reactive and you don't have the veteran, which would be uh, one thing that you could swap in for this, um, you could also just do a regular Cyclops. I've, obviously, you got to have something that's good at taking out vehicles, uh, so Cyclops is going to be your main focus for that. Um, I like where this one sits at 50 energy. We talked through about putting the veteran in uh, if you do have it unlocked. Uh, one thing I'm, we're really kind of unsure, and this is kind of a little bit of a tangent, but um, them actually providing some kind of like seeable number statistics for some of these units uh, because honestly I can't tell you how much better a veteran Cyclops is compared to a reactive or regular Cyclops uh, as far as like damage. Obviously it's going to have a little bit more health. Uh, we can look at that uh, just based on the amount of health bars it has. Uh, but it, as far as damage is concerned, we're really not too sure. Uh, but like Sloss said, I think the 50 energy with a lot of the other stuff being pretty high, uh, I think reactive is a good choice here. Yeah, it, it would be nice to have some tangible numbers, um, but I mean, and we may get that. We'll see. Uh, but for right now, we're kind of going on gut and how it feels in game. Um, so we went with reactive here. Um, our next card is the Warthog. Uh, again, nice to have something that can hit everything. I usually uh, appreciate kind of jack of all trades cards in the middle of my deck. Uh, and this is kind of filling that spot for me. We do have the Hornet that we'll talk about right after this. Uh, so if you have the notion to kind of switch the warthog out something that we've been talking about is maybe the sniper the infantry heavy meta is pretty big right now uh, especially like extractor marines and stuff and and siphon grunt squads and all that that seems to be really big right now it should just spam a lot of small infantry units so maybe we need something that is a little bit more dedicated uh like a sniper that they can't even touch and can't even see for the first 90 seconds uh but if not warthog still gonna get in good against infantry and gonna take out most things so not a bad unit to have there um it's actually pretty close to the hornet um obviously they just they hit different units better but they're they're at least neutral against everything else. So having something that can hit everything in the middle of your deck is something that I'm favoring more and more. So I kind of have a little bit more focus units at, at the early and late deck, but right there in the middle, it's nice to have uh, a little bit of uh, ability to hit everything. For the one leader power, um, we usually stick to two. The first one here is Scatterbomb. Uh, again, that is kind of designated right now to take out large groups of infantry uh, because that is kind of less a focused attack on a small area but kind of a shotgun blast into a bigger area uh, which is really nice for taking out a lot of infantry units that can be grouped up uh, the scorpion at 110 and the vanguard kodiak at 110 you're starting to see a lot more focus on infantry now uh, that is definitely by design 
The the standard scorpion's not bad. We are also going to carry the grizzly here, but the standard scorpion's not bad. Being able to hit infantry and vehicles um, is going to be really helpful. And, and I mean, you can still kind of consider this mid deck. It, it is towards late deck, but uh, having that ability to, to hit those things is really nice and have that armor. Uh, so this is a, a unit that I couldn't, I couldn't justify getting rid of just because I had the Grizz. Because uh, the Grizzly is just, it, it's that much higher. I mean, it is another 40. It's worth a whole nother Wolverine uh, when you look at it. So uh, that is something that was that was kind of vital for us to keep in here. Uh, and obviously Kodiaks always want to have some type of, of artillery. Vanguard Kodiak is great uh, with the rush ability. You pop it in and it actually already sets itself up. Um, it's kind of a set and forget type unit. You just pop it down and you just look away. You don't even have to set it down for it to anchor itself and start popping artillery rounds. So having that in a good place, um, I've actually, there have been games I've kind of completely voided the, the rush capabilities for it and popped it at base. If, if the other team is cycling through all these big groups of infantry and stuff, I'm going to keep the Kodiak at base. I mean, I mean, you know, they cover a big enough swath so you can hit just about anything. Um, so even if I don't use that rush ability, I think it's worth the extra little bit of energy to have the rush um, because if you get a chance to, to set up on C or B, you can just pop the Vanguard Kodiak on OP Ridge and start, start slamming things immediately. Uh, so that's really helpful. I really like the Kodiak there. The Vulture right now... It's too good of a unit to not have in. With the really infantry-heavy meta, uh, it, it can struggle a little bit being kind of weak to infantry. Uh, it still hits them neutral, but it's it's still weak to them defensively. Uh, but it's too good of a unit to not have. And if we put too much emphasis on the infantry as a whole deck and a whole unit, we're going to start seeing the the air meta rise back again so we need to be prepared for that we do have a couple units that will be able to handle the air and hopefully the combination of wolverines and vultures will be able to handle any air units that come up so hopefully that will keep the keep the meta from shifting on us and and keep us from dedicating too much on any one certain type of thing i know i've talked a lot about infantry but uh difference between keying on it and just being blind to everything else Real quick, I, I just want to say to the the vulture again, it it having so much health uh, makes it a good option to drop in. If you are seeing those big groups of infantry, uh, the phoenix missile is going to be kind of uh, your ability that you want to focus on. Uh, this thing can get taken down pretty quick, like Sauce been saying, uh, especially if they're they are doing those big groups. The key uh, though is going to be as soon as you see this thing drop in, drop it at your base, uh, lock onto a you know a unit in the middle of that infantry group and shoot this Phoenix missile. Um, the area of effect damage from that it is going to do great damage, going to take out quite a bit of units and, and even the playing field for you. Um, so that's why I like to have this in here. Perfect point. I mean, it's I, I totally forgot to, to mention that, but that that is a great way to kind of take those out. It's kind of like a, a poor man's leader power uh, to, to drop in on a bunch of infantry right there in the middle. Use that Phoenix missile. It's easy to forget about it because the, the standard armament on the Vulture is so good, but definitely use it. And like, like you said, Doc, that's a perfect example of a fantastic time to use it. Uh, the Grizz, love the Grizz. Always have. Uh, it's a super cool unit. Um, I, I, if it wasn't good, I'd keep it in just for novelty. It's, <laughs> it's so cool, but it is a really good unit. It's, it's a scorpion on crack. Um, that's, that's all it is. And I mean, the same reasons you have the scorpion, you have the grizzly, they're just amplified. Again, it can hit those vehicles and it can hit those infantry uh, and still not bad against air. So we see, I feel like a lot of times standard decks, just kind of normal decks are going to carry a lot of vehicles. So you'll see these these four cards here bam 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 the the vehicles are in trouble uh and that's good i mean it's the, this is kind of the meat and potatoes of this deck if you can get here you can build up some numbers on these have one of each one of each of these four you should be in good shape uh for most things so hopefully the uh the grizz can kind of push things over the top a little bit the combat salvage we talked a lot about in our firefight build for forge um 
watch or try to get to level 25. Uh, we'll put the link to that in the description. That's a pretty, it's a fun watch. That was, I really like the firefight. I am struggling with combat salvage. Uh, it doesn't always seem to work. And in that one, I talked about if I have combat salvage in my hand and say I have or just Warthog, a Grizzly, a Vulture, and a Vanguard Kodiak. That's a lot of energy just saved up right there. I mean, that's over, what, 600 energy? Right there. So that is something that I want to keep, and I don't want to lose them. So if I have those out on the, on the field, I have Combat Salvage in my hand, I don't want to spend anything that will drop me below 180 energy. Because if I, if I see an eradication come down or a Mac Blast start to come down and it's going to tear my units up, I need to pop Combat Salvage really quick to spend that 180 and save all that energy that I had just spent to get all these units in. Because um, that's just cost effective. Um, that, that just seems to make a lot of sense to me. But the issue is I don't know that we've had a lot of time where it's worked, uh, to be 100% honest. It's, I've had times where I, I pop the combat salvage, there's like a little shock wave that happens, that shock wave happens, and then my Forge's Warthog dies, and I get nothing. Um, can't tell you how frustrating that is. Uh, <laughs> Doc, I, I think you've seen a couple times where we just, you see that kind of ripple go, and I mean, the timing made sense, right? Yeah, I, I mean, we've used it effectively, we've grouped it, the area of effectiveness is actually pretty good. Uh, it's just about it actually happening now. I can't say 100% for certain how long it is. It seems like it's close to like the 30-second-ish mark, maybe a little bit shorter than that uh, as far as when you use it and when the unit dies. Uh, but again, I've seen you use it sloth, uh, call it in at appropriate times, and it the, the units just never come back. They don't appear back at the base. They don't appear back at headquarters. Um, so it, that's, that's the frustrating part about this. We'll continue to play with it and see if we can have... Uh, maybe it was just a, a small bug or something that we were running into in those few matches. Um, I have used this in Skirmish as Forge's actual leader power, and it's great. It's great when there's a base. Uh, it's great in the actual multiplayer and the Skirmish nodes, uh, which is why we thought it was going to be so good uh, here. Uh, but again, it actually working has been our problem. Uh, not that we uh, you know, don't know its effect. We know its effect. It's a great effect. Um, so maybe it was just a bug. We'll continue to play around with this. Um, there are some other options. We'll hop over to that here in a second as soon as uh, Sloth finishes. That maybe if you don't have this or uh, you're not a fan of using it, if it's a little buggy, um, we, we think we got something we could swap in here for it. Yeah, and we've been talking about it a little bit uh, with the Combat Salvage, but Forge is Warthog. On paper, Meh, uh, doesn't honestly doesn't impress me on paper uh, because it's neutral to everything, doesn't have any special capabilities to hit anything very well. But the rally ability is awesome, especially if you have a decent amount of units built up around you. Uh, he does have a shield like every other hero, but it doesn't feel like he's just neutral to everything. He feels like he slams things. Uh, that that Gauss cannon on the back does some work. So. On paper, it doesn't look great, uh, I'll be honest, but it actually performs pretty well in battle. Um, he is very mobile, and he has a capability to chase without you telling him to, so you <laughs> kind of have to keep an eye on him. Uh, we had that happen a lot in Firefight, where he would just, you know, somebody would start, come and start fighting, and he would shoot him a couple times, and then they'd run away. And I wouldn't even be giving orders, and he would just run away from the rest of the army to go chase that one unit. Uh, so that can be dangerous, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, the thing that I always forget, Anvil Round. Use that Y ability. He fires an EMP at an area. And area effect and EMP is awesome. That's a great combination. Uh, so use that. Use that if you have it. Uh, the Solely for the rally ability and the Anvil Round, he's worth it. Uh, obviously, the ability to hit everything is nice too. But he is going to be kind of the, the top tier. If you don't have him, obviously, you can use the Condor stuff. Uh, definitely prefer Forge's Warthog to those, but uh, use what you have. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I'll highlight too is it feels like he has a good, a, a very comparable amount of shield and health uh, compared to the other Spartans or the Banished Leaders. Um, that was one area where I was a little nervous about, and me and Sloth had talked about, you know, back in the beta, uh, how is he going to set up? Um, but he, he does, he can actually take a good 
uh, a, a good amount of damage, uh, and that having the shield just really helps. Um, so I think at two, 220 energy, uh, I think they placed him actually quite good. Um, he could have came in, because uh, we didn't see him in the beta, he could have came in a little underpowered or overpowered. I think they kind of hit the nail on the head uh, with where they got him right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just a few other things, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap this up. Uh, we do run the full metal starting army. Um, that's just kind of a personal preference. Uh, the secondary Mad Dash army uh, isn't a bad option uh, either, um, but I guess we're just not as much of a fan of the wild jackrabbits. And then having a scorpion right at the outset, um, especially if you're going against uh, you know, a single player match, or two player match, uh, and they end up picking uh, you know, other UNS UNSC leaders that don't have great capability against uh, the scorpion, he's gonna do quite a bit of work for you. Um, so just wanted to hop over and, and just look at a few cards that you could swap in. Uh, say you don't have Forge's Warthog, for instance. Trooper Warthog is another decent uh, high energy card. Uh, Last Stand 3 uh, makes this pretty good. Um, so we've been a fan of this. It seems like it's uh, you know relatively well usable um, uh, as, as kind of a substitution. Again, if you have the Condor Strike, you can't swap that in there. Uh, but I think me and Sloth are kind of uh, on the same page as far as wanting to be able to call in something that's going to have some staying power uh, and a unit that'll stick around uh, and at 140 energy he seems pretty good. Obviously if you don't have Vanguard Kodiaks using a regular one that'll do the job just fine. Um, again we highlighted a little bit earlier the veteran Cyclops uh, and then here's the sniper that Sloth was talking about uh, that's a potential kind of swap in. Uh, again we, we have seen kind of a surgence of you know, an all infantry with some Nightingale support uh, meta. We'll see how that kind of continues to flesh out. But we'll, we'll kind of keep a pulse on that. Not a bad option to bring in. Then I wanted to highlight heavy metal. So again, if you if you don't have combat salvage uh, or you're looking for a leader power to put in there, um, heavy metal might not be a bad option. Boosting armor, I have seen this used quite effectively, especially if you are uh, kind of locking down a point and they're starting to bring a large army in. Uh, heavy metal, especially at 70 energy, uh, this is something you'll be able to deploy just about all the time. Um, and honestly, I've seen it uh, use good work uh, to kind of keep a lot of units alive and, and in turn allows you to deal quite a bit of damage. Um, now, obviously, reducing movement speed, that's something important to note. So don't spawn a bunch of enemies at your base, then hit them with this, then try to move them to a point. Um, either have them on a point defending or have them close to the point uh, before you use this uh, to then allow them to... Uh, to, you know, use the best of this and get the most damage while, you know, obviously uh, getting the best of the, the armor boost as well. Fossil Desert, I don't think there was anything else that we really wanted to cover. As far as... No, take a look in. here at uh, the card library. I I think we covered it. I, I think the, the stuff that we mentioned are probably the things that I would advise um, if either you don't have some of these cards or looking to change things up, mix things up a little bit. All right, so again, one last quick shot at the deck. Um, let us know. Uh, let us know, one, down in the comments below if you've got a slightly different build. Uh, again, we're trying to make a deck that's kind of going to be even keel across the board against all the different types of strategies. Uh, so we have found some success using this deck as far as fighting that kind of infantry rush. Uh, but this deck also does really well against just kind of standard deck builds um, where people have a good mix of uh, you know armor, air, uh, and infantry as well. Um, so big fan of Forge. Uh, glad they brought him in as a leader. I think he's pretty well balanced as it sits right now. Uh, and and he, has, he does have some really cool cards. I love the Grizzly. Sloth hit it on it enough, uh, but the Grizzly is a great <laughs> unit. So uh, it's awesome to see all that stuff. But let us know down below if you got a different build, uh, too. Also let us know if this, you end up using this build and it helps you out, or if there's any uh, single swap outs uh, that you guys would make. But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, we're going to be trying to bring a few more updates to the deck builds once we get our hands on a few of the last cards and get a little bit more time on our belt. We don't want to just uh, throw those out if we're not fully prepared for them. So hope you guys enjoyed. I've been Doc. That's been Sloth giving you a great overview of the deck. Uh, we're Average Gamer, guys. Thank you so much for checking this out. Make sure to subscribe, follow us on Twitter uh, to keep up to date with all of our stuff. Thanks for watching, guys.